Hello and welcome back to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can put inside of a bun. In today's video, we will be learning how to approach a CT head scan in an OSCE station. I will take you through how I approach a CT head in an OSCE station and how to approach it with a systematic manner so that we do not lose out any obvious abnormalities. With that said, let's get straight into it. So just like with any investigation, the first thing we want to do is ensure we have the correct patient and we have the correct date and time at which this scan was taken. So I usually start off by confirming the patient details. The next thing we want to do is state what view this is. Usually, we're presented with an axial view, as seen here. However, two other common views which may appear is the coronal view, where the head has been cut across the side, and the sagittal view, where the head has been cut down the middle. Following this, I like to state the most obvious abnormality first, and its location. And when I state the most obvious abnormality, the things that I kind of want to describe is, is it hyperattenuated, which means there's a lot of white on the CT head scan? Or is that hypoattenuated, which means there's areas of grey? As well as this, I like to describe the shape or any features of the lesion that we have in front of us. So let's take a look at this. Here we can see that we have a CT head scan. And the biggest abnormality that we can see is this area of hypoattenuation as it is much more grayer than the surrounding structures on the patient's right hand side. A thing to note is that when we do a CT scan, we look at the patient from the top, uh, from the toes to the top of their head. So the sides are actually reversed. So in this case, we can see an area of hypoattenuation on the right hand side. Usually, hypoattenuation shows ischemia leading to infarction and infarcted tissue tends to swell up leading to edema. Edematous tissue which is pressing on nearby structures may cause squishing or effacement of certain structures such as the ventricles here. We can see if we compare the right uh, anterior horn of the right ventricle it's a lot more squished than the left hand side here. As well as this, we are not able to differentiate or distinguish different types of tissue due to the fact that they have infarcted and swollen up. And this leads to a phenomena known as loss of grey-white differentiation. So if we look at this area, we can clearly see areas which are more grey and then areas which are more white. So this shows good grey-white differentiation. However, in our infarcted region, what we see is that we can't actually make out which areas are white and which areas are grey. On the other hand, we can have lesions which are hyperattenuated. So here we can see an obvious abnormality on the left-hand side of the brain, but there's hyperattenuation. Usually hyperattenuation on a CT scan shows acute blood or a hemorrhage. And in this case, the blood has actually spilled from the brain parenchyma into the ventricles, which is why it looks like this shape. The next thing that I want to look at is how is the normal structure or the architecture of the brain affected, and if the normal architecture is preserved. To start this, I like to have a look at the midline of the brain and see if there's any midline shift. And essentially, we can make this a lot easier by looking at symmetry. So if we focus on this picture here, and I was to draw a line down the middle of this brain, we can see that this brain is very asymmetrical. In fact, the middle of the brain is pushed significantly over to the patient's left-hand side. Here is the middle of the brain along my mouse cursor. The blue line is where the middle of the brain should be. This is occurring due to the mass effect produced by this large area of bleeding inside of the brain, which is expanding and causing an increase in intracranial pressure. The next thing that I like to examine are the basal ganglia. 
Now, the basal ganglia are the structures which are very, very important in initiating movement and coordinating movement. And often in conditions such as lacuna strokes, these structures may become infarcted. If we look at the basal ganglia here, we can spot three structures. First of all, we have the head of the chordate nucleus. Then we have the thalamus, the lentiform nucleus, and the internal capsule. And all of these structures together form the basal ganglia. Any loss of white-gray differentiation suggests that there might be a stroke in this area. The next thing that I like to have a look at are the ventricles. And by this, I mean, again, are the ventricles symmetrical or is one side more squished than the other? Here we can see very, very nice and symmetrical anterior horns of the lateral ventricles and symmetrical posterior horns of the lateral ventricles. And as a result, because they're symmetrical, we can say that they're normal. Don't be thrown off by these areas of white inside of the ventricle, so seen here and here. These are actually areas of calcification, which occur in the choroid plexus, which is responsible for producing the CSF, and that's completely normal. The last thing that I like to have a look at in the normal architecture of the brain is are the vascular territories preserved or are there any abnormalities inside? So if we look at a CT head scan of a brain, we can actually break it down into three vascular territories. And towards the front, the anterior side, we have the anterior cerebral artery. The middle portion is done by the middle cerebral artery. And the posterior section is done by the posterior cerebral artery. And again, any features of uh, ischemia, such as hypoattenuation, or bleeding such as hyperattenuation, I would describe within a vascular region. Lastly, I like to describe if there are any obvious skull deformities, such as any fractures of the skull that I can see, or any scalp hematomas that I can see. Now that we've got the basics of how to approach a CT head, please feel free to pause the video here and have a go yourself at describing the CT head. In a few seconds, I will talk through the CT head as I would do in an OSCE station. So I hope everyone's paused, had a go at describing the CT head. Let's get started by taking it step by step. So this is the CT head scan of Mrs. Jenny Smith of date of birth, 1st of January, 1994. It was taken on the 10th of February 2022 at around about 6.20 p.m. I can see that this is an axial view scan of the head. In this, I cannot make out any obvious abnormalities, and as such, I am going to examine the head systematically. First of all, I can see that there is no obvious midline shift, and the brain parenchyma appear symmetrical. I can see that the head of the chordate nucleus, thalamus, the lentiform nucleus, and the internal capsule are all easily visualized, and there's no abnormalities there. I can see that the anterior and the posterior horns of the lateral ventricles are symmetrical. And lastly, I can see that the vascular areas of the ACA, the MCA, and the PCA are symmetrical and thus normal. I also cannot see any obvious skull fractures or any skull hematomas, and as a result, this is a normal CT head scan. So now let's have a go at describing this CT scan. Again, please pause the video, have a go yourself, and then we will describe it together. I hope everyone's had a good go at describing the CT head themselves. Now let's go through it together. So this is the CT head scan of Mr. David James of date of birth, 1st of January, 1994. It was taken on the 10th of February, 2022, 
at 6.20 p.m. This is an axial view of the head. And the biggest abnormality that I can see is an area of hyperattenuation on the patient's right-hand side, which does not cross the suture lines. It is associated with significant midline shift. I cannot visualize the basal ganglia. And there is full effacement of the posterior horn of the right lateral ventricle. I can see that the bleeding is compressing the area of the brain supplied by the middle cerebral artery. And there is an obvious skull hematoma overlying the patient's right hand side. All of these features are consistent with a diagnosis of an extradural hematoma. Now let's go through this CT head. Again, feel free to pause the video and we'll go through it together. Okay, let's go through the CT head together. So this is the CT head scan of Miss Anastasia Romanov of date of birth 1st of January 1959. It was taken on the 10th of February 2022 at 6.20 p.m. I can see this is an axial uh, view of the head. And the biggest abnormality is this area of hyperdensity in the left cerebral hemisphere. I can see that this is associated with significant midline shift, and I cannot visualize the basal ganglia. I can see that there's extension of this area of hyperattenuation into the ventricles themselves, and the ventricles look enlarged, suggesting obstructive hydrocephalus. I can see that this bleed is in the region of the left middle cerebral artery, and I cannot visualize any obvious skull changes. All of this is consistent with a diagnosis of acute hemorrhagic stroke of the left hand side. Okay, so again, let's go through this CD head. Pause the video now, have a go yourself first, and then we'll go through it together. Great, I hope everyone's had a go at describing this CT head. Um, we've been through the drill a couple of times now, so I'll just say I would like to start by confirming the patient details. And let's get straight into it. So this is the axial view CT head scan of this patient. The biggest abnormality that I can see is this large left-sided area of hypoattenuation or hypodensity on the left-hand side. There is significant loss of grey-white differentiation, and I cannot see any proper midline shift, maybe some mild midline shift. I am unable to visualize the left chordate nucleus, so we can see there's the right chordate nucleus on this side. However, I cannot visualize it due to this area of hypoattenuation. I can see that there is effacement of the anterior horn of the left lateral ventricle, and that this area of hypodensity is in the region of the left middle cerebral artery. Lastly, I cannot visualize any obvious deformities of the skull. This is most consistent with a diagnosis of acute left ischemic stroke. Okay, so let's go and finally describe this last case. Pause the video now, have a go yourself, and then we will go through it together. Great, let's get straight into it. As I've done it a few times before, I'd just say that I would confirm the patient's details. I can see this is an axial view, and the biggest abnormality I see is a left-sided crescenteric shaped area of hyperattenuation with background hypoattenuation, and this lesion seems to be crossing the suture lines. I can see that there's significant midline shift, and we are unable to visualize any of the left chordate nucleus or the thalamus or any of the basal ganglia. I can see that there's full effacement of the left lateral ventricle, and I can see that this lesion is compressing the area supplied by both the uh, MCA and the ACA. And I can see that here, 
There's no obvious skull changes that I can see. All of this is consistent with a diagnosis of acute and chronic subdural hematoma. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it useful, please leave a like down below, uh, a comment if there's anything that you think we could do better um, or any, anything that didn't quite make sense. And stay tuned because we do have a lot more OSCE style videos coming.